Section 1.1, problem 40. So in this case, you're given a function g of x, which is the absolute value of x over x squared. The first thing you need to figure out is what is the domain? So what is the domain? Well, everything is fine about this function except possibly at zero. The problem is whenever you have a quotient, you always have to make sure you can't, you're not dividing by zero. Otherwise, it's OK. So in this case, when do you divide? When are you dividing by zero? Well, the only time that happens is when x is zero. When x equals zero, you're dividing by zero. which of course is undefined. So we can't have that. But everything else is OK. So what is the domain then? Well, then the domain is just everything except for 0. So the domain is everything from negative infinity up to 0, but not including 0. So that's why we have the parenthesis instead of the square parenthesis. And then from 0, Again, not including 0, all the way up to anything uh, that's positive. So that's the domain. Now, what is the range? Well, for this, we have to break this up into uh, this, this. There's a number of ways we can do this. So. One way is the following. So notice that x squared is equal to x times x, which has the unique property that it's always positive, no matter what the value of x is. So we might as well just take the absolute value of x, and you would get the same thing. Let's think for a moment why this is true. So when x is a positive number, what is the absolute value of x? Well, it's just x. So then this equation works because we haven't done anything different. What happens when x is a negative value? Say, for example, let's try one. What if x was negative 3? Well, then negative 3 squared is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 by definition. But isn't that also the same thing as the as 3 times 3? Because after all, the two negatives, when you multiply them together, get canceled out. So it's as if they didn't exist in the first place. And that's what the absolute value does. It just gets rid of the negative sign. So therefore, this equation always, work, always works. So that means we can rewrite g of x as absolute value of x over absolute value of x times absolute value of x. Well, then now we can cancel out some of the absolute values. And all we're left with is 1 over the absolute value of x. So now let's draw this function. So the first thing we're going to do is look at when x is positive. When x is positive, 1 over the absolute value of x is just 1 over x. So we know what that is. That's going to look something like this. Right? Now the question is, what happens when x is negative? Well, when x is negative, absolute value of x turns it back into a positive number, right? So first of all, if we didn't have that absolute value of x, what would it be? Well, for negative values, it would be 
something like this. But we do have that absolute value sign there, which means it can't be a negative value. What happens is it gets flipped back into the positive section, so that for negative values of x, it looks essentially the same. It's just a mirror image. And so the blue graph represents 1 over the absolute value of x.